Hey guys, what's up? I'm Spear with The Voice of Reason and this is the third part in the Glitch Up Track Analysis series, where I'll take a look at the remaining couple of synths in the drop on my track Penguin. So let's get going. Um, last time around we took a look at the first bass, which was the Reese bass, and the second bass, which was the kind of metallic clonk. So this time uh, we'll focus on the bassy melodic interplay, which happens right about here. <laughs> And it's comprised out of two main synths, um, and the first one is Combinator 1 in my case. And you might be wondering why I'm using a Combinator in this case. And uh, I'll make that clear in just a second, but first let me just quickly go over the settings on the Maelstrom, which I used for this bass. So as you can see, I've got a Sawtooth x16 on the first oscillator at octave 3, and on oscillator B I've got the Flies wavetable, the FX Flies wavetable with the motion down at minus 40 and the index at 3, and the octave at 3 as well. Um, this flies wave tool is actually pretty nice for uh, dubstep basses or uh, basses in general because it has a very nice kind of metallic sound to it, if I give you a quick demonstration. So it's a really nice kind of gritty sound, and especially when layered with the sawtooth times 16 you get that nice Reesey feel to it. Um, yeah, and there is there is not much more to the Maelstrom, as you can see I didn't route these oscillators to the shaper or the filters, it's pretty much just that. Um, this whole thing then runs into this equalizer, and you've probably already noticed that this isn't your conventional equalizer. So, um, the settings are, uh, the parameter 1 is activated and the frequency is all the way up at 20 kHz, the gain all the way down and the Q at 11.3. And the parameter 2 is the same, but the frequency is inverted, so it's at all the way down, it's at 39.1 Hz. And what I did was I used the mod A on the Maelstrom, which isn't used for anything else. I took it and routed it into the Combinator by hitting this little show programmer button right here. You can uh, pop this kind of window up. And then just uh, took the CV out on the mod A on the Maelstrom and routed it into the CV1 in on the Combinator. Selected it. Um, Select the EQ right here in the programmer and then the CV1 down here and routed it to the uh, parameter 1 frequency with an amount of uh, minimal 0 and max uh, 1000 and then took it once again, again the CV1 input and routed it to the uh, second, the parameter 2 frequency and with, a, with the values of minimal 655 and max 0. So they are kind of inverted and they just give the sound a nice uh, kind of movement. They make it more lively by cutting frequencies dynamically. So this is really not much more than uh, two uh, dynamic notch filters which are inverted to one another. And it gives the, the bass this nice kind of um, yeah, moving feel, almost uh, talking kind of feel. But if you f uh, if you kind of fiddle with these settings more, you can get it even to sound more like someone talking, especially when you use an FM bass or something. This setup is really nice on all kind of basses. I, I highly recommend playing around with an equalizer with two parameters with the gain all the way down, modulated by uh, any kind of CV source, and then just go nuts on the settings and try out what uh, kind of results you can get. It's a really nice technique, as I was saying. Okay, um, this whole thing then runs into a Scream 4 distortion unit, which is just the basic Scream 4 distortion tape distortion, um, with the damage at 70, the speed all the way up, and the compression at 32. And then we've got a couple of equalizers, once again, um, to remove some of the uh, mid-section uh, frequencies. So we've got one at uh, 250, where my snare sits, and one at 1.1k, uh, uh, which just removes some ringers. <laughs> If I just... Yeah, it just removes some ringers there. And uh, these uh, two parameters just get rid of some um, some more annoying uh, mid-frequencies, but not cutting them totally because they are important to the char characteristic of the sound. But still, I, th I thought they were just a little bit annoying. <laughs> And it just sounds cleaner without those. So I just uh, put the gain on minus 9 at 2.8 kilohertz and at 600 hertz I put it on minus 7.4 dB. And then we've got the last equalizer which is once again there to just get rid of the lows which are then replaced with the sub over here. And to round things off we've got the usual reverb on the room algorithm 
EQ enabled to get rid of some of the lows, so the low gain at minus 18, the low frequencies at 371 hertz, and don't forget to hit enable right here, and then just basic reverb settings, so decay at 31 and drive it at 18 to round things off. <laughs> Yeah, and this that's it for the uh, first combinator. So I actually had it that this combinator uh, alone was responsible for the kind of melodic interplay I've got going right here. <laughs> but it seemed a little boring. So what I did was I um, opened up this MIDI file and as you can see here is a note missing. And I copied it over to another lane and another patch. So this is actually this combinator one copy down here. Um, which plays just one note that I cut out of the melody right here and it gives it a nice kind of variation. So let's take a look at this bass down here. So as you've probably already heard, this is once again a uh, uh, typical Reese bass. Uh, but this time around I'm using a Maelstrom for the Reese. So I've got two Sawtooth times 16 wavetables right here, both at octave 3 which are slightly detuned against each other. So I put the uh, send up at to 20 on oscillator A and to minus 20 on oscillator B. So we've got a kind of typical re-space in this mouse room right here. And uh, what I did then was I routed the oscillator A into the shaper, which is on noise mode with an amount of 70, just to give it some more noise, basically. And oscillator B is routed into the filter B, uh, which is then again routed into the shaper as well. And filter B is on, uh, comp, uh, on the comp minus mode with the frequency up at 123 and no resonance and envelope enabled and the envelope is inverted with a maximum amount of 127 and the attack up at 82. And this attack then closes the comp filter down here every time a key is hit and it just, uh, it just applies a nice kind of texture to the sound. It doesn't make it sound as boring. Um, this uh, re-C Maelstrom then runs into the edge red. Once again, I, I like to reuse Edge Red on notch, uh, for the notch filters on Respace because, yeah, it has an awesome sound, really. And once again, the Japan type on mode for pole notch. Uh, but this time around, I was too lazy to set up a CV chain. So all I did was I hit Alt-click on the frequency and automated the notch filter frequency. So it goes from uh, all the way up at 28 kilohertz down to uh, 180 hertz. <laughs> And it has this nice kind of, um, yeah, Cohen soundish Reese uh, bass sound. Which is kind of cool. And I also turned on the uh, uh, shaper on the edge red in shred mode and put the drive up to about 8.9 dB. And this equalizer down here is once again just responsible for uh, reducing the mids a little bit and making room for my snare, which sits at 250. It's kind of a habit of mine to just cut a, a hole where my snare sits, even though the snare doesn't set, uh, doesn't really hit where this bass hits. Uh, it's just a habit I uh, kind of took up. So yeah. And uh, these two basses then together make for this interesting kind of, um, yeah, melodic bass uh, part in the drop. <laughs> So now that we've covered all these different bass synths, there's only one synth left to cover, which is my Antidote 3 here, uh, which is the kind of melodic, um, yeah, the melodic part right to the end of each phrase. And uh, it's a very simple patch, actually. It's a six analog source, um, uh, slightly detuned and spread across the stereo field. And then I've got uh, six analog source, one octave above the original six by using the uh, diet plus 12 right here. And I also brought up the sub oscillator. So we've got another saw uh, one octave below the original six. Then I used this LFO one here with a frequency of uh, 10 uh, or 9.99 Hertz um, just for pitch modulation. So it's de destined to pitch fine with an amount of 22. And that uh, just makes this nice kind of uh, yeah pitch modulated sound. And I I also use the filter with full envelope, so 100% envelope at 28%. So the filter on the antidote doesn't display in hertz, but percent. And uh, the resonance is at 23%. And then I brought the attack up on the filter envelope to uh, 229 milliseconds to have this nice kind of yeah this nice focus on the attack when I play. <laughs> 
Uh, this then runs into the soft tube saturation knob, which is, uh, which is a very cool rack extension, um, which I like to slam on all kinds of things. It's on the keep low type at 5.9 and it just adds some crispiness. <laughs> then once again, I cut a hole where my snare sits and uh, reduced some mids, very, very uh, kind of mild settings here, just to get rid of some of the mids. And then once again, the usual reverb to round things off with the usual reverb settings, so low drive at and decay at the uh, room algorithm. Yeah, and that's it for all the synths on my drop um, in Penguin. Um, I hope this tutorial was useful. If it was, drop a like. That would be much appreciated. Oh, I forgot to say that the last two times, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, doesn't matter. And um, I'll probably make a fourth part, as I announced in the second part, um, which uh, will deal with some of the um, yeah extra things I've done and the shuffling, probably. And maybe I'll go over the glitch hop snare uh, a little bit more in detail. Okay. So like I said, I hope this tutorial was useful. My name is Bio, this was the Voice of Reason. Have a good one, or whatever you're having.